welcome back. Uh, this is uh, week two of our new format, and uh, today I'm joined by special counsel to me on the downtown is uh, William Geary, and uh, Bill Geary has uh, an extensive background both in the private and public sector, general counsel for Clean Harvest, a lot of different roles in the public sector, both at the national and state level, but the, probably the most prominent one was commissioner of the MDC. And my favorite. And your favorite. Yes. Uh, a lot of visible work you did at the time, Bill. And so I'm, Bill's been uh, invaluable to me and to the city, uh, really putting the deals together. They're very complicated. They're very uh, legalistic, a lot of financial aspects to it, uh, architectural aspect to it. So we, we got a lot of work to do. But today we're working uh, with Bill in the downtown area. And I know you're hearing a lot of different noises because there's a lot going on in the downtown. The, uh, the old Granite Trust building is being refurbished as we speak. Uh, I'm sure you've driven by and seen the scaffolding. And to, to my left on the other corner is uh, Quincy Mutual, which has put together a number of pieces of property that abuts their own property. Uh, Bill, you probably remember, I know I remember the Strand Theater. We used to be just, certainly just down the street here. Absolutely. My, my second date was the China Syndrome with, with my wife. <laughs> back uh, many years ago now. Wow. Uh, but we've seen a lot of changes and, and we're obviously we're walking down Chestnut Street now and and I know that when you came on board we were we were dealing with really the the first piece yes. uh, of the downtown which is the West of Chestnut project which is a combination of uh, Redgate and of course Quincy Mutual Company and we're very fortunate that Quincy Mutual Company continue to be committed to the city because they they had lost some substantial monies with the uh, investing in the Streetworks project, but they committed to Quincy, 150-year-old Quincy company, and um, got to give them a lot of credit because if this didn't happen, the other projects wouldn't follow. That's correct. So, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Mayor, the uh, work that's being done on the Granite Trust building now is a byproduct of the development of West of Chestnut. That's correct. That that was part of the requirement. That was part of the, the requirement. Permitting. Yep. It's a great old 1928 Art Deco building that is a landmark uh, building in the city of Quincy. We used to call it the Superman building when we were yes, kids, but yes. you're, you're absolutely right. And uh, the west of Chestnut, though, it's on the west side of Chestnut, connects over to Hancock Street. Correct. Uh, with a beautiful uh, public way. I know you worked on this project as well. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the intricacies of this as we're heading toward toward the next phase, really, that we're going to talk well, a little bit about. Well, th uh, that's a good question, Mr. Mayor, because there is interconnectability here, uh, because this uh, public way here um, provides both pedestrian and vehicular access and egress between Chestnut and Hancock. And one of the themes that we want to develop as we proceed with the newer developments is to maintain interconnectability yep. between whatever is developed here and uh, uh, on the uh, east side of the downtown to Hancock Street, of course, is the main street, right. and what will be developed ultimately uh, hey guys. on the west side of Hancock Street in the Ross lot. Right. And, and what we've seen now is, is the west of Chestnut is filled. Yes. The residential apartments are filled, the retail space is filled, uh, yes. it's thriving, uh, and it just shows what we've always believed in, that this is going to work. Yes. Um, you know, we're, just, we're just at the corner now of Foster Street, and another part of the deal on the bank was the loss of the separate building that had the drive through for the yes. bank. That's been accomplished by putting this just across the street at the corner. Actually, they did a nice job with it, so that's interim, uh, but it certainly works. Again, back to the original deal to make this all happen. Correct. And as you can see, it's used. I it's actually use it. It used to be one of my favorite uh, drive throughs It still is. My wife uses it more frequently. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> a big uh, guy in the ATM. We're going to cross Foster Street and head over to, uh, to which becomes a Ryan Parkway. Chestnut Street turns into Dennis Ryan Parkway, which is the courthouse. And of course, across from the courthouse, as most people from Quincy are familiar with, is the Hancock lot, which was always one or two major uh, public places that the city was putting into the development effort. Uh, it's yes. a big surface lot that is really uh, undervalued and underutilized. So uh, as, as we stop here and cross, what, what, what we're going to start to see is, as you know, and, and maybe you can talk a little bit about it, but we've, the city, with the council approval, we have uh, agreed to purchase a couple of buildings here on the corner, Cottage and Hancock. And tell us what that means to the project. Oh, it means a great deal to the project uh, and to the overall feel of the downtown development. The city actually has completed the acquisition of uh, these buildings. It's actually two buildings, although people may only 
see it if they see it from the Chestnut Street side, only see this uh, side of it. Yep. Um, but it's connected to another building uh, down on Cottage Ave. So the city plans to demolish this building. And where we're standing now will be a beautiful public park. Uh, it will be adjacent to the uh, so-called O'Connell Tower. Before, before we get into that, just yes. for, for the benefit of the public now, yes. the city uh, has the right under the law it can be a friendly taking or under the eminent domain law, we can yes. go and take something for a public purpose. Yes, that is correct. And uh, we did negotiate with the owners of this building. Uh, we ultimately, the owner, uh, uh, neg we negotiated it and... Uh, appraisals uh, are done. Appra appraisals are done, uh, competing appraisals, uh, review appraisals. And uh, we offered uh, what we believed to be a, a fair price. And um, we did end up uh, taking it by eminent domain. Um, and the advantage which that has legally is that it clears title okay. immediately. Yeah. And, uh, which is huge for anything which to is, happen. Which yeah. is huge. Yeah. Uh, I might also add that uh, in doing so, in, in acquiring the property, we were obligated to the tenants in this building to assist them with their relocation. Yep. And we've been doing that actually for several months. And as of this moment in time, most of the tenants have been relocated. There were only 14 of them. Yep. Um, and so most of them. As, you, as we're walking along, I see now many see of them are empty now. They're, many they're moving of them. on. And it, it's important to note that prior to acquiring the building, a number of these uh, storefronts and uh, offices upstairs were empty. Right. So uh, it was an underutilized building. Uh, the owner was a, a willing seller, and we'll see he has the chance uh, at some point in time in the future to, uh, to uh, appeal yeah. the price, but the taking is done. Well, I want to, uh, we're now going from Cottage Ave to, to technically Cottage Street, right. which uh, is not really a street, but this Correct. is was a driveway to the parking lot at one point. Yes. And, and uh, you started to talk a little bit about the park that's going to be next to the O'Connell building. But in addition to the park, Cottage Ave is going to be widened. That is correct. For egress to what will be a the new, new parking garage. A new Civic garage, uh, 700 plus spaces. And um, uh, there will be uh, three access egress points. One is directly straight ahead from this entryway, as you mentioned. This street will be widened. Um, the park will be from uh, a, a portion of this building up to uh, Dennis Ryan Parkway. Yep. And um, a civic space that complements the park but would be different in character. The park will be your more traditional park with uh, grass and trees and of course benches and the like. Sure. This will be civic space in the sense of a hard um, surface yep. to allow um, civic activities to occur, uh, art shows, things of that nature. Yes, who knows? It could be, a, knows? It could be concerts, it could be uh, it, uh, perhaps it, the farmer's market makes a comeback down oh, here, absolutely. who knows? Yep. There's, there's a variety of civic programs, but also there will be an opportunity for people to gather. Right. Uh, so. Uh, the O'Connell building will have 126 approximately units. And, and those are going to be luxury residential units. Luxury residential units. Yeah. And over here, the LBC project, which as you can see, the demolition occurred. The excavation will commence uh, shortly. Uh, that's going to be 171 units. Right. And connecting through that building will be an atrium that will be public space that comes into the civic space uh, approximately in the vicinity of where that trailer is. Now, was the alleyway open? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told you we sent them a notice to cure. Yeah. We'll see how much they cured. So this. And this, by the way, the. Uh, this, you know, the I, I, I spoke with I spoke with Joe about that this morning, and we yeah. looked at it on the okay. on the sketch, and it's something that can be accommodated. And we and we're passing by as 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 we know. Uh, we've had great success with all kinds of new restaurants that have come to the downtown. Yes. One of the old stable ones has been the Fours. They've yes. been here a long time. Uh, and work on Tim Colton and all the restaurant owners. We are working on a parking plan. We're going to yes. be going back to the city council and back to the businesses to, uh, before we implement that plan, to make sure that we're accommodating as best we can all the needs in the downtown. Uh, some people come in and drive into the lot and get a ticket and pay when they go out. 
uh, that just come in to do some commerce, but there's a lot of monthly card holders yes. here, uh, a lot of people that work in the downtown, so we're trying to accommodate as much as we can with them, perhaps some off-site locations, satellite locations, so we keep as best we can the spaces available closest to the businesses for those people that are using the businesses. That is absolutely correct. And I know, as, as you just described, uh, what the LBC site uh, is going to be, that was probably one of the ugliest blocks in the downtown, if yeah. not the city. So yes. it's not like we took down this nice, handsome old architectural gem. No, it, 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 <laughs> it clearly met the definition of blight. <laughs> so nobody's going to miss that place. And within, that's all due respect to perhaps some great retailers over the years that oh, use the space. But Well, certainly it, it, like many other places in the downtown, had its heyday. And it's heyday, it, it served a purpose, but unfortunately, as we know, much of this space has been uh, either vacant or uh, marginally uh, used. And this building will be seven stories high, be a very uh, attractive building. The, uh, our, the uh, atrium itself will be a beautiful gateway into this civic space and into a parking garage. Yep. And, and it's important to note, Your Honor, as, as you insisted, the uh, garage isn't going to be yet a newer, ugly version of a garage. Oh, a gosh, yeah, garage. Yeah. It's going to be very aesthetically uh, complementary to the buildings that are being built around it. Yeah. We've seen some horror shows over the years. MBTA yes. structure, Quincy yes. Center, for example. Yes. Uh, absolutely. It, it, you know, and this, you need to have the parking. Uh, you need a garage. There's no yeah. question about it. You need structured parking, uh, but to really complement everything else we're doing and all the investment we made, uh, it makes sense to try to make that garage look like something other than a garage. That's correct. And I think that's what that's what yeah. the team is working that's at what as, the as team we speak. So is, is working on and something that's going to complement the uh, future activities that are going to occur in the civic space. Yep. So here we are on the parkingway side, which is the back side of Hancock Street, uh, which the area between the buildings on Hancock and the tracks truly. Uh, the last thing people probably remember here is the garage that was taken down uh, this past year. Uh, the garage was in bad shape, the old Ross garage, and uh, we've done some surface parking as an interim measure as we continue to move the development process forward on this side of the street. And as, uh, as we know, Billy, uh, we have a, somebody at the table that we're very pleased to have at the table, yes. a company called Fox Rock, which is uh, kind of an arm of Rob Hale's operation. The Rob Hale's the head of Granite Telecommunications. Very, very successful firm in North Quincy. They own three buildings there. And uh, the Fox Rock, I believe, has about two and a half million square feet of commercial space in their portfolio. So we have designated them the developer for this side, and we are beginning the process now of putting it together. Ultimately, it's something that has to get approved by the city council. But you've been the point person on this. You continue to be the point person on it. And uh, we're very lucky to have you at the table for us, with us. Thank you. Uh, and we have some great outside consultants. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the process. Yes, uh, we're going through a process whereby Fox Rock has uh, committed, uh, through Mr. Hale, um, the development of a, a million square feet of commercial space. And uh, this will be mixed use as we've attempted uh, in accordance with the URDP um, to have mixed use uh, throughout the, the downtown area. Um, but the focus here is really on re-energizing the economic engine of downtown Quincy with new commercial space. Uh, which has been missing a little bit. Which is We've definitely... Had a lot of residential proposals that's and some retail. That but. is correct. And uh, we do believe now that there's a sufficient synergy from the redevelopment that's already been approved, some of which is underway across the street that we just uh, recently toured, uh, for commercial interest to locate here. Fox Rock is, as you said, well respected, well known, uh, particularly in medical circles because that has been sort of their niche, their focus, and they are working with prospective clients to uh, have them locate here in downtown Quincy because of our proximity to public transportation, both the red line, commuter rail, bus, uh, significant bus terminal here, uh, and that uh, that's what uh, 
medical providers are looking for sure. for their patients, uh, both uh, outpatients as well as others. So uh, those discussions uh, between Fox Rock and prospective tenants are underway. Yeah. We have been talking with Fox Rock as to the template for the type of development. We're undergoing sort of a mini master planning process right. here in the it's Ross area. It's a significant parcel, but it's also significant development uh, that we're talking about. So I know um, the old saying, the devil's in the details, there are a lot of details in this. Yes. I know it's very complicated legally, financially, yes. and uh, you know, obviously helping you, we have some great outside consultants. Yes. And I want to remind the public of that, that you know, part of our responsibility is to protect the city. Yes. So obviously we want good, positive development that's going to bring jobs, going to bring tax revenues in, uh, and all those jobs, people working here then use the downtown, whether they go in a restaurant, maybe shop in a retail location here so it all makes sense but we also know that we've got to protect the city at the same time correct so maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the outside consultants that we that we have engaged oh yes uh, we have uh, a legal team uh, that uh, I head up uh, but includes uh, uh, Tom Kiley who was involved in the prior uh, Streetworks proposal. Yes, so and great experience there. Great experience. It's, it's not the Tom Kiley that we see on TV, the million dollar man Tom Kiley. No, not that Tom <laughs> Kiley. Our, uh, Quincy's own That's Tom correct. Kiley. Uh, and uh, Brian Connolly, uh, 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 also a, a very astute lawyer with one of the major downtown firms. Uh, downtown he's Boston. Downtown Boston, <laughs> yes. Uh, and, uh, he's and a former city councilor. So and a former he, he city loves councilor. The city and yes, the city. Absolutely. Just at heart. And uh, Jim Masterman, who is an uh, expert on uh, land acquisitions by uh, governmental entities such One as. He's the top in his field. He is the top in the field, yeah. absolutely. And uh, so that team is working on this. We, of course, have uh, uh, BSC, which is a planning and consulting engineering firm uh, that is reviewing. The, uh, the massing for the area, the kind of uh, density that would be required uh, and uh, that would optimize the values here, both for the developers, but also for the city, for the city's uh, tax base in the future. And in addition to those folks, uh, we also have no stranger to the city, Wooden and Curran at the table. Of course. Which is handling really all the public infrastructure pieces. That is correct. All the engineering, all the work that we're uh, observing right at this very moment um, was the result of work that Woodard and Curran did. We also have uh, financial experts, uh, Pam McKinney and Craig Sigmore. Um, they are uh, well known in uh, governmental circles for the uh, SAGE counsel they provide on the financial aspects of any kind of real estate development. And I've seen her in action. Yes. She's terrific. She She's appears terrific. before the city council because, as you mentioned, all of this requires city council approval. She knows her stuff. She certainly does. And, of does. course, the, uh, the first activity we've seen on this side of Hancock Street is the Galvin Project. Uh, yes. I think we're going to take a peek at that as we go back up on yes. Hancock Street. And the Sean and Scott Galvin, uh, Quincy kids, uh, grew up in West Quincy. They both live in West Quincy. Their father, uh, Tom, was... Uh, our local historian, yes. uh, quite a guy, yes. does a cemetery to us. But the Galvins have done a number of projects throughout the city, and they do a very nice job uh, what they do. Uh, they're, they're well built, it's quality. So their project is exciting uh, because it's uh, two buildings, uh, condominiums, yes. uh, again, residential with retail on the first floor. Because condominiums I like because it's a little bit more of a commitment to a condominium because people yes. are purchasing the property. and. Uh, I think you know the stats show you get a for the most part you get a more committed citizen, more active citizen because they have an investment to protect. So uh, that's a that's a good thing I think overall yes. for the project. And of course we're walking on the easterly side. Oh, I'm sorry, the westerly side of Hancock Street, looking at the easterly side, which is the LBC plot. I know uh, we chatted a little bit about that our last walk. Yes. Uh, the next phase for that is the the uh, foundation, I believe. I know they have to work around the town brook. That is so, yes, that's only the remnants hey, Tommy, of... I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Good, good to see you. Great. Thanks. Keep up the good work, Tommy. Thanks very much. Take care. So, the, um, that will be the first aspect of the project. Then they'll build the building above uh, both. Of course, the culvert, relocated culvert, will be the floor of an atrium. 
It's going to be public space that leads from Hancock Street into the civic space that will front the new parking garage. And now we're standing at the corner of Cliveton Street, which has been closed for some time, with the exception of the walkway for pedestrian uh, for the, the Galvin project. So we're seeing the, the front building now going up. The back building is already finished. And I believe they have uh, almost half of the units under agreement on the first building. So um, exciting to see it. Uh, I love to see cranes and excavators yes, and yes. steel going up. Uh, as I mentioned before, the Galvin's do a nice job. So this is Cliveden, and of course, directly across the street, some of these other buildings at some point are gonna be going away as well as we do the extension of Cliveden, which then will connect over to the new Hancock parking garage that, that is we've correct. been working very hard on. Okay. That is correct. It will, uh, the street will be extended and it will actually be one of three major access egress points to the garage. Oh yeah, across on the street, not on a crosswalk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're back on the uh, easterly side of Hancock Street and the other walkway, which has been here for a number of years, which abuts the LBC project. Now this area, when Cliveton Street is expanded, this area will actually become a pocket park. Yep. And the uh, park, uh, will provide uh, some open space for uh, the downtown area and, and serve as a very attractive uh, entree to the uh, civic which space. We, which we've talked a lot about over the years. Um, you know, the Hancock Adams Green is probably, obviously the premier space. Yes. But we also talked about a number of civic and pocket parks throughout the center. So, yes. you know, we're just visiting on the, on the Ross side, the parkingway side, we are working through, obviously, you mentioned the massing program that we're working with the developer on, but over there, there'll be some pocket parks, open space. Correct. Uh, the one you just described, and certainly, I know we talked already about the civic space in front of the garage behind the fours. Um, so I know that um, we're both on the same page. This, the yes. former MDC commissioner yes, and the sir. former park director. Yes. We want yes. to see good parks and good open spaces. Kindred spirits when so, it comes to open space. Yeah, absolutely. And the public, that's what the public wants, and that's yes. what we should be doing. So. When you're able to do some of the density we're doing by going up, it allows us to create and carve out some of these these spaces. And you look at this old, you know, surface lot of Hancock yes. lot. It's uh, it's certainly less than pretty. Yes. Uh, there's a few trees here and there, but overall, it's just one big, ugly asphalt surface lot. So, uh, actually, once we stack the parking and the structured parking, uh, it will actually be prettier in my in my view with some of the accent landscaping and civic space we create. So. Uh, looking forward to the next phase. Yes, sir. I agree.